Ben, thanks so much for being with us today on the Motivation and Success Podcast Show. Tell us more about your background and what got you interested in internet marketing. Thanks, Tom. It's it's good to be here. Uh, see, I I've been web obs- web obsessed probably since I I first discovered the internet as an early teenager, um, but it it didn't turn any, into anything that related to business likely until after graduating college, started an internship uh, where I really got got to learn a lot about blogging, Twitter, uh, which was just in the really early phases. Mm-hmm. Um, and started trying to push some of the clients uh, online and, and getting active. <clears throat> active profiles going online, but um, seeing just, I guess, uh, being obsessed with the medium for so long and then picking up the business sense and seeing how they they interconnect and, and relate to each other mm-hmm. um, got me going from there and I eventually found myself at a marketing startup that specialized in social media for small businesses mm-hmm. uh, where we were working, I guess, at one point over 50 small businesses, we, I think, almost all local businesses who uh, we were helping growing a presence, helping them trying to develop a brand and uh, strategy online. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them, whether they were a golf course or a magic shop, uh, which were two actual examples, a lot of them tended to deal with some of the same problems. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of problems? Uh, well, a lot of them take more of an act, uh, inactive approach to it's social media, definitely, but the internet in general, where they're they're almost complacent, maybe not being active in it, um, not not keeping things current with with trends. Uh, website, definitely, but. Even social media, they'd rather sort of push off to someone else or have someone else handle it. When what makes small businesses so unique is that heart and soul they put into their actual right. business on right. the day-to-day basis. But right. and so, like the website and social media don't match that at all, right? I mean, the website's like from the eighties, right? <laughs> and you know, there's uh, what like flashing animation and. You see the text scrolling across the screen and auto playing music and exactly yeah just sort of shake your head and hope hope they'll come around but uh-huh. uh because people people really buy passion which is why so many small business owners can't compete at the price but on passion they're far ahead of uh, a lot of other players in the field mm, definitely so I mean, how do you how do you communicate that on social media or in a website? I mean, do you have to spend hundred thousand dollars on the newest website in the world? It's the best. It's, I mean, a a lot of it's effort. Um, mm. Websites, yeah, get someone who knows how to design. Uh, if you can do WordPress yourself uh, and get it set up, great. If not, uh, a designer is definitely worth investing in, but. Mm. As for actually marketing yourself, uh, if you're working on a really small budget, uh, you don't need to take out a second loan or, uh, you know, try to find some some big lump of cash to start marketing. All you really need is a lot of honest effort, because mm-hmm. um, that's that's what I guess people really buy. Uh, and if you want to get people interested in your business online, usually there's that mirror effect going on where uh, if you want to get people interested, you first need to show interest in them and show that you care about them to get them to care about you. Right. Well, they do that in store and um, get a lot of great reviews on the day-to-day and have great relationships, it doesn't really, they don't carry that practice online. Uh, just mostly because it's something they they never grew up with. 
the mentality is sort of the same, um, where you're still focused on good customer service and, and building relationships. Mm -hmm. It's just, I guess, a different setting. It's taking what you do offline and bringing it online. Right, exactly. And so, I mean, is this something the entrepreneur themselves should be doing, or should they just hire someone to do that? Or uh, it's, do it, you know? it's, well, it's something everyone should be really doing. There are certain things that, I mean, you, you definitely can outsource and work with other people on. No one uh, is really, I guess, an island, and especially if you're building something bigger, you need a team or... Um, Maybe you know you need extra marketing help, but don't want to commit to hiring on someone full time. You can look at an agency for that. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone has to sort of think of, okay, what do I, what do I do offline, uh, and how can I get it to translate online? Because that's really what scales too. Right. Because um, it. If you're not promoting yourself online and no one else is promoting for you, it's sort of another world that you're just invisible in. Right, exactly. And especially now with like local search being so huge, I mean, you, there's no way you can compete if you're like a local pizza joint versus, you know, Pizza Hut and all these other chains and they're doing tons of local marketing, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, all, all the big brands are, are really active now. Um, pretty much all on all the the major social networks and mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to be on every single one that they're on but uh, at least pick a few that that you're really going to put a good effort into mm -hmm. preferably where your customers are uh, and really just I guess go toe to toe with them because you'll never be able to, to match their budgets but uh, it's likely you can beat them in in authenticity and caring mm -hmm. definitely I agree with that for sure. And, uh, you know, for me, it kind of feels like, like, you know, like the tech boom all over again, like 1999. And I know a lot of people are thinking that too. Like, you know, social media is overheated. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's overblown. It's not really going to be that important. You know, five years, people aren't going to be talking about it. What do you think about the future of social media for businesses? Yeah, I, I definitely see that, that viewpoint where uh, there's a lot of hype behind it because a lot of people do it poorly, uh, and it doesn't come from a place of, I guess, understanding. So uh, it will cool down probably a little bit, but definitely not not going away. Uh, people connecting and uh, forming groups on the internet and sharing their interests, uh, taking pictures of food that they've eaten at your restaurant and uploading it online. Mm -hmm. uh, the core desire to, to share and connect has been around like, since, since uh, and social media and the web just makes that easier to do uh, at a faster rate and uh, in a way that scales too. Mm -hmm. And that aspect of it isn't going away. But social will always be there. Um, it's just something people will eventually have to adapt to. The mm -hmm. hype part of it where people think social media is, you know, where you just tweet, uh, hey, come, come buy from us today or come buy this, mm -hmm. promote, 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 without an ongoing dialogue and you just use it as a microphone, mm -hmm. people don't see the, the ROI. Um, right away with it. Mm -hmm. And social is more of a long-term game too. Um, since you're, instead of the uh, one night stand like an ad, you're, you're going for the relationship and mm -hmm. an in hall where once you can make sort of that emotional connection with people, you have a lot stronger uh, commitment to them or commitment from them right. and you would get out of just an ad or uh, a different type of marketing. Right, so I mean, you're creating long-term relationships with these people, right? And that's gonna mm -hmm. lead to long-term business because I mean, every successful business owner knows that relationships equal success. I mean, you can't have, you know, 
long-term customers if you don't have a relationship with them, right? So, I mean, how are people using social media to connect with customers that maybe they already have? Like, I mean, if someone's in your store, should you be engaging with them on social media, and how do you do that? You, that's, yeah, when people uh, come to me or, or companies that I've worked for and say, kind of, where do we start? Uh, usually the, the first place is starting with your current customers. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you definitely want to optimize uh, people coming into your business for the social aspect to, to carry what uh, the relationship you set up in store, carry that online as well. Mm -hmm. You can do that, I guess it depends what type of business you are, but pretty much any brick and mortar type of business can do something. In restaurants, you have Foursquare. So if someone checks into your restaurant, uh, you can see the analytics on the back end. Uh, if they have a Twitter account, you can see it. Uh, and you can follow them, reach out, and just thank them for, for coming in. Or maybe follow it up with what you have. Did you like it? What did you think? Or coupon. Yep, coupons. Yeah, uh, yeah and Foursquare, you can definitely entice people to come in with the coupon, too. Right. So social signage, definitely. I've seen work for people, especially restaurants, um, or any sort of shopping that you do, too. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see, uh, get 10% off this, coup this, uh, this item if you check in right now. Mm -hmm. Incentive to check in, and then you have a way to follow up with them. All right. Definitely. Well, you know, like back in the day, I mean, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, businesses, you know, the key to success was, you know, advertising. It was radio, it was TV. And now, I mean, it seems like that's all shifted. Like, I know very few local entrepreneurs who actually invest heavily in radio or TV ads anymore. You know, most of them are investing online. They really know what they're doing. They're really succeeding. So, I mean, is that just going to continue, that shift? Yeah, radio and radio and TV will will never completely go away, I, I don't see, but it's, it's definitely more vague, uh, where when you have the option between something that's kind of vague and you're not exactly sure what type of return you're getting on it, with something where you can see, okay, here's how many people clicked on this uh, ad in Google, uh, here's the amount of people who converted, here's what they bought, uh, mm -hmm and here's how much money we made from it, it's a lot more likely that people will go the exact route with it. Um, right, so it's a lot more easy to measure social media or online marketing efforts. It, yeah, it, it is and it isn't. Because uh, when you do the ads and measuring that, but then when you also get to the emotional side of it, it's tougher to measure, but you, you sort of know that it's paying off. Right. So if maybe there's an, an upset customer um, and the president or owner of a small business is, reaches out to them personally and sends them a message following up um, or apologizing or offering to help fix the solution, mm -hmm. that changes the context of the relationship where uh, that business owner reaching out makes them feel differently towards them. Right, for sure. So, that, you know, or leaving a bad review, um, they would have at least a neutral or maybe positive approach to it. So it would be hard to track, I guess, maybe the word of mouth for, for each person you make uh, a personal connection with, but uh, you know it pays off eventually because it has so many other people. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So what are some of the biggest mistakes you see entrepreneurs making? I mean. uh, yeah, for probably the, the biggest mistake uh, entrepreneurs and uh, businesses, big and small, make in general uh, on, as it relates to online marketing, uh, social in general, it's just not thinking of, I guess, what's, what's in it for the customer when you're doing something. 
Uh, so if you're sending out an email, uh, a tweet, a Facebook message, a Facebook post, you have to really get in that mindset of uh, I were the customer. Why would I find this interesting? Would I find it interesting? Mm -hmm. What would cost me to like this? What would cause me to share it? Uh, why would I leave a comment on it? Mm -hmm. uh, right, just, just to have something there and just to be seen when they could be writing things that, that build engagement and growth. Right, for uh, sure. And, and that works with uh, pitching yourself as well, especially for startups and entrepreneurs. If you're approaching, uh, say, a journalist from a local paper or some popular blogger, the easiest way to get coverage is to, to pitch them so it's in their self-interest to write about you. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? Uh, getting to know the blogs is really, really good. Know their writing style. Um, so you already have a feel for, for what they already write about. Uh, and then you'd, you'd have to pitch them in a way that showing them that their writing about you is something their, their readers would be interested in. Mm -hmm. So you can't pitch it saying, please, you should write about us. We have this new product. Uh, it's great. Instead, you have to sort of flip it around from the reader angle and sort of examine that and break it down as to uh, what, what's in it for the reader if this journalist writes about me. Mm -hmm. And then if you can show success in other places where people have written about you and they got commented on or shared a lot. Uh, that Right, gotcha. So what about pitching to your customers? I mean, what if you're on Facebook or Twitter or something and you want to, you know, give your customers a discount or offer them, you want them to buy from you. So what do you say to get them to buy from you on social media? How do you make an offer that, that actually connects with your customers versus just, you know, buy from us now? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, coupons, coupons work for, uh, getting people to, to act socially. Uh, I've seen people use just secret words that, uh, people on Twitter or Facebook could use when they walk in. Mm -hmm. If they said that secret word, they would get 20% you know, off their order that day or something. Uh -huh. uh, so there are ways to, I guess, tweak the standard coupon just as something right. a little more unique. But uh, everyone does does love the discount if they love the product. Right, for sure. Right, and that kind of makes you feel like you're the customer and you, you know, you see this tweet, it's like, you know, get 20% off if you say like fun when you come in. And then you say that and you like get the discount, like you feel like you're more special than all the other customers in the store because they don't know about, you know, they don't know about that, right? Only you got that. But you feel like it was only you because you were on Twitter getting that. Yeah, there's there's definitely an aspect of it where it it's, it makes you feel like an an insider. Exactly, for sure. If on Facebook or Twitter, if you can if you can make the your fans and followers feel like like they're getting something exclusive, uh, mm -hmm. that people who just walk into their store and maybe are even regular customers don't get. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that can be deals or sort of a peek behind the curtain and seeing who works there and more of the personality of the company. Mm -hmm. People have a stronger bond to it, which generally leads to more sales. Yeah, awesome, very cool. Great, well, Ben, thanks so much for sharing with us all this awesome information on online marketing for small businesses. Where can people find out more about you and the work that you do? Uh, people can find me at bennesvig.com, uh, which I, generally have to spell out for people, uh, B-E-N-N-E-S-V-I-G dot com. Mm -hmm. Or if you get close typing into Google, maybe it'll autocorrect too. <laughs> awesome. But there you can see my blog and uh, any projects I've been up to and uh, contact information as well. Awesome. Well, thanks, Ben. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Tom.